Okay, this is Dr. Marion Carroll, and we're going to continue with Lecture 5, uh, Part 2. Here we're going to be um, uh, expanding on our previous discussion of, I think we did molecular weights, uh, we used um, Avogadro's number uh, to calculate the number of atoms or molecules. Um, it depends on if we're talking about the molecular weight of an element or a molecular weight of a compound. So we're going to continue with the discussion of percent mass uh, calculations and um, and I believe uh, there is an isotope uh, problem that we had. I wanted to go over that and move on uh, forward into our discussion of bond, bond formation. Um, and I'll deviate into talking about the uh, periodic table and its periodic variation and we should conclude uh, with a discussion of ionic covalent bonding. Alright, so if you recall a mole of any element or a mole of a molecule is equivalent to the uh, molecular weight or the atomic mass for instance, um, atomic mass unit or gram uh, molecular weights. Uh, for instance, if I have one mole of lithium, okay, we know that a mole that lithium has an atomic mass unit of 6.9 atomic mass units. Okay, so its gram molecular weight is equivalent to 6.9 or 1 grams per mole. And if you recall, a mole is what? One mole is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Okay, so if I have a mole of lithium, I have 6.02, uh, 6.94 grams per mole. I also have 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of lithium. Okay, keep that in mind. We're talking about gram molecular weights. Uh, we use this a lot. Here's an example. If I have five grams of a sample, and in that sample, uh, I discovered, you know, through various um, quantitative and qualitative means that I have 1.8 grams of calcium in that sample and I have 3.2 grams of chloride okay, which is the balance of the sample so I want to know how are these related to one another okay the first thing I always want to consider is making sure I'm working in moles instead of grams because elements don't combine based on gram weight they combine based on molar ratio okay because one gram of calcium might be different from one gram or is different from one gram of chloride and so there these have to be uh, converted to a ratio 
where one mole of calcium is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, which can react with one mole of chloride. Again, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So we want to take our weights and convert, it, convert them to moles. So 1.8 grams of calcium times one mole calcium per 40.08 grams. Okay, this again is our um, atomic mass units for calcium. That's equivalent to 0 0.45 moles. Grams cancel. You can also set this up. Uh, some people like to set up the grid. Grams of calcium here. Uh, grams of calcium here. Uh, one mole calcium is what we want. And uh, if we had to do any more conversions, we'd continue on making sure that our units cancel. Alright, but in this case, that's the end. And we get 0 .45, 0 0.045 moles of uh, calcium. If we do the chloride in the same manner, 3.02 grams of chloride. Okay. Uh, one mole of chloride is equal to 35.45 grams, and that's equivalent to 0 0.90 moles of chloride. Alright, so now we have our ability to determine the ratio of our calcium and our chloride in this 5 gram sample that we, we have. Well, how do we do that? Well, a ratio of anything is uh, you do something to something. You know, I always use this, the colon, to mean two. Two, you know, triangles to O's. So what we want is a ratio of our calcium to our chloride. Again, we work in moles. So we know that 0 0.045 moles of calcium uh, is our least amount. So we want to divide those moles into each other and then divide the moles of the larger molar concentration, which is the chlorine, by the moles of calcium, and we get 2. So now we know our empirical formula must be calcium 1, chloride 2. And when 1 is ever written or necessary, it's left out and understood to be present. And what we have is calcium chloride. So 5 gram sample is equal to calcium chloride in a ratio of 1 to 2. 1 to 2. Let's look at another example. A molar mass of what is the molar mass of a compound? Okay, we were dealing with elements before calcium and chloride. What if we had a compound? Methane. Alright. What is the molecular weight of methane. So the molecular weight is equal to, remember, is equal to the sum of atomic weights. And 
so if we we know that one mole of carbon is equivalent to 12.01 grams per mole right, and we only have one carbon atom so the total is 12.01 grams per mole we have one mole of hydrogen we know is equivalent to 1.0 we'll round up 1.01 grams per mole and if we look at the formula we have four moles of hydrogen add those up 16.05 grams per mole of methane okay what is the percent mass of each element in methane nope. methane the percent mass is calculated by taking any percent you're taking a part of something and they're dividing it by the whole and then multiply by a hundred. So the uh, part of methane that we want to calculate is is our carbon. Percent mass of the elemental carbon. All right, we know that the mass of one mole of carbon is 12.0 one and if we divide that by the mass of the element of the compound 16.05 we're going to get times 100 sorry we're going to get 75 percent and if we do the same for hydrogen we know in the element it's 4.04 .04, and we know that elemental hydrogen is 1.01 .01 times 100 we get 25 percent all right the two of course total to 100 percent for the methane now there's additional information we can get if we did not know exactly what the formula was for methane we can go based on the percent mass or percent composition of the compound and the way we can determine what actually is the ratio of these components we simply divide the percent 75 by the gram molecular weight of each element this one is 25 for hydrogen and its gram molecular weight is 1 so now we know 75% of carbon gives us a 6.3 and 25% hydrogen gives us 25. So our ratio is 6.3 to 25. But we want whole numbers whole number ratio of our elemental carbon and hydrogen and so to get whole numbers we need to divide it by the smallest number which is 6.3 this is equivalent to 1 going right here to the edge of my paper and this is equivalent to approximately 4 All right. so our ratio of carbon to hydrogen is 1 to 4 and our empirical formula then would be CH4. Okay? All right, so that uh, concludes it. Talk about molar mass, and we'll continue in our next chapter.